Welcome to another edition of How to Fix It Yourself. Uh, today we're going to be uh, working on the 1994 F-150 pickup truck. We have a few more issues that we need to resolve on this truck. Um, we've got a few more videos we'll be doing on it as well. Uh, remember to click the buttons below to subscribe to this channel and to like this channel. It really helps. And we do have links at the bottom for the tools and the uh, items that we use in these videos. So what the issue is we're dealing with today is after we did some of the other things on the Ford that uh, in the previous videos, all of a sudden it started running really poorly and that wasn't good. So we had no idea why it was running really poorly. So we started doing a little uh, checking a little bit here and a little bit there to try and figure out what was going on. Uh, one of the things as you'll see here in a little bit is uh, we decided that it might be a fuel problem uh, and that was just one of the items we decided to check. So in process of that, we went ahead and uh, pushed the Schrader valve on the fuel rail and noticed that not very much fuel came out. So we picked up a fuel pressure gauge to check the fuel pressure and lo and behold, the fuel pressure was only coming up to about 25 PSI. Now, the fuel pressures on these uh, trucks should be running somewhere between 35 and 42 PSI. So clearly we had a problem with the fuel uh, system on this particular truck. So we aren't gonna show that to you because you don't need to see how to check the fuel pressure twice. Uh, we'll actually have later on in the video after we finish all the repairs and do the final check, we'll show you how the, uh, to read the pressure on the fuel rail with the fuel pressure gauge at that point. But yeah, we did find that we had low fuel pressure. Now that could be a result of a variety of different issues. One of them uh, that most people immediately jump to is the fuel pumps. Now this particular truck has two fuel pumps because it has two tanks. And that gets to be a bit of an issue and as to whether one tank is not working, the other one is, and all those type of issues. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're going to bypass all of the electronics and all of the engine stuff that uh, regulates when the fuel pump turns on and off. And we're gonna go straight to the fuel pumps and we're going to activate the fuel pumps to see if the fuel pumps are in fact working. So rather than immediately go, gee, we need to replace a fuel pump, let's check it and see what's going on. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up and bypass all the electronics and go directly to uh, checking out the fuel pumps directly. The best way to do it on this kind of a car is to go to the fuel tank selector switch. Directly connect that directly to the battery and you'll see that as we proceed. Now one of the first things we'll need to do is we're gonna need to disassemble the dash. Now we're not gonna do that on this particular video. There's other videos you can look at to show how to disassemble the dash. But uh, our next scene will show you with the uh, dash all disassembled and the switch uh, being accessible. So to test the fuel pumps, we need to bypass all of the electronics. And the easiest place to do that is at the selector switch, which selects between the rear uh, fuel tank and fuel pump and the forward fuel tank and fuel pump. So the, uh, what you're looking for is this black and white cable is the power to the fuel pump uh, for the rear fuel pump. The red one is the power to the front fuel pump. So we're gonna just bypass those. We're gonna put voltage and current directly into the wires that are going to those tanks one at a time. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna do the rear tank. So we'll just plug that in. I've got a jumper wire that runs all the way back up here and we'll push that on the battery and make the pump run directly and see what happens. So now it's time to make sure that the fuel pumps are working properly and that they're putting out the right pressure. So we've hooked up a uh, pressure gauge onto the fuel rail and we're now going to check. So we have two checks we're gonna do. 
This one right now is hooked up to bypass to the rear uh, tank and to the rear uh, fuel pump. So we'll now take and go ahead and uh, run that and see what happens. So there it goes and it's getting up to about 35, 36. And we want uh, the fuel pump to be putting out somewhere between about 35 and about 42. So this rear fuel pump is definitely in good shape. So we don't have to further troubleshoot the rear fuel pump. Now we'll take in bypass to the front fuel pump and run the same check and make sure that pump is working properly. Okay, so as you saw, the rear fuel pump uh, was just fine. It had good pressure and it was working well. So now we're gonna change the jumper to the front fuel pump and we're now gonna go pressure check the front fuel pump. Okay, so we showed you how we changed the uh, bypass to the front uh, fuel pump and front tank. So let's check and see if we're getting that pump working properly. And there it goes. And it's getting up to about 40. So the front fuel pump is definitely good as well. So at this point, we now know that both the front and the rear fuel pumps are putting out the right pressure and are working properly. So we now need to finish going through the rest of the diagnostics to figure out what's going on through the, uh, all the relays and all of the fuses and all of the start conditions that the engine control module is uh, running and make sure we get that all pulled together so we get the truck to actually start on its own without having to do any bypasses. So we went ahead and pulled out the uh, kickboard off of the passenger side in order to show you the inertial switch. Now you don't have to take the kickboard off to check the inertial switch unless you think the inertial switch is bad. They have a finger cutout right here. Now this, this is a uh, one of those plastic grommets that holds it together but you can get your finger in here and if you go back a little bit towards the door you can feel the red button that you're now seeing on the screen and if the inertial switch goes off that red button will be up so you can always check to see if it's gone off by trying to press it down if it goes down then that could be one item so from where we disconnected the fuel pumps on the tank selector switch the next thing up line from that is this inertial switch. So if that's bad or it's triggered, then you're not going to be able to run your pumps. And that could be an issue. Now this doesn't happen very often. Now the inertial switch is there for in case you get into an accident and you get a real hard bang uh, on the car. That'll set off that inertial switch to shut off the gas flow so as you don't get a car fire or it's harder to get a car fire. Now in more modern cars, that shutoff is triggered with the airbags going off. So in modern cars or more recent cars, you're not gonna have that inertial switch. But again, as we're doing our diagnostics, we wanna keep moving upstream from the fuel pump to the switch to now the inertial switch and we'll keep uh, pushing on up to make sure we find the actual cause of the no start condition. So at this point, we've now bypassed the electronics. You've seen that the fuel pumps actually run. Uh, we can hear them running. You've heard them running. Uh, we've also checked the inertial switch to make sure that has uh, not been tripped. So at this point, we know we have uh, fuel pumps that seem to be working and we know that we have at least electronics up to the um, relay valves uh, or the relays. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and check the pressure on the um, fuel rails, but we're gonna do that after we replace the fuel pressure regulator. Those go out frequently. It's not uh, something that's uncommon. They're not terribly expensive, and there's no good way to really test those. So if you suspect it's a fuel regulator, just go ahead and replace it uh, for the few dollars and a little bit of time it takes. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and replace the fuel regulator uh, and we'll go through the steps required. It's a fairly simple uh, repair, so it shouldn't be a problem for almost anyone that has any mechanical capability to go ahead and replace this uh, 
fuel regulator. So you'll notice that the fuel regulator sits back here on the driver's side of the engine. Uh, it has a vacuum hose on the top and uh, it has two um, four millimeter uh, Allen wrenches on the sides to hold it in place. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and uh, remove the vacuum hose and then we'll pull the regulator. It just takes a little wiggle, a little time to kind of get it off of there. Should be good and snug. Then you want to get that out of the way. Then you'll want the uh, four millimeter Allen wrench and you'll just go ahead and take off the uh, two uh, bolts that are securing it together. As always, you want to be careful as you uh, pull out especially small little uh, nuts and bolts and items off of your engine that you uh, try to be careful not to drop anything because they can be notoriously difficult to find and it really want to make sure that you don't lose any of them. All right, so now we'll just wiggle this out of here. You'll notice it has a couple of O-rings which handle the um, high pressure side and it has a uh, sm uh, small spout here that handles the uh, low pressure side. So this is uh, what we're going to replace. Again, it, we'll just drop it back in and just do the reverse, put it back together again. As we've mentioned before, uh, whenever you're dealing with O-rings, it's always good to put an O-ring lubricant on there. Now you can buy these at the automotive store. You can buy lubricant at the automotive store. They tend to be really expensive. Go to a pool shop and get the uh, stuff they use for the O-rings on swimming pools. Much cheaper and uh, it's really good quality stuff. Uh, it's a derivative of a DuPont uh, lube that they uh, invented for the space program. And uh, so it really works nicely. Just get a little bit of on there uh, and you don't need that gob it on so you'll get a little extra on there that's okay but go ahead and take a paper towel and kind of clean it off after you make sure you've gotten it good around all the uh, uh, o-rings now if you really want you can just use regular motor oil on these um, that'll work as well uh, I don't like that quite as well but nevertheless um, you know, that will work. But uh, you really want some kind of lubricant on your O-rings because if you don't, you dry push them in there, it's likely to get pinched and you're likely to destroy your O-ring without realizing it and then you'll have leaks to deal with. So it's always a good idea to put a little bit of uh, lubricant on the uh, uh, ceiling surfaces when you uh, put these things back in place. So I'll start getting the rear screw started get it so it's kind of finger tight then we'll do the front screw and then we'll take the uh, wrench and go ahead and tighten them down it doesn't matter which order you tighten them down in whichever is comfortable for you uh, is just fine <clears throat> You probably want to go back and forth so that you snug it down um, evenly uh, with this kind of a, a seal. You don't have to be, not like doing head gaskets or things like that where you have to do a star pattern. But it's good to go back and forth and kind of make sure it goes down fairly evenly. As I frequently mention, you don't want to overdo it on the uh, torque 
on these. You just want to get them good and snug. Snug enough to where they're not going to come loose, but uh, not so tight that you're going to be having an issue with stripping things out. Okay, so we've got those on nice. Now we're going to take just a little bit of the O-ring grease. Even though this isn't an O-ring, it's a sealing surface. And we're going to just put just a little bit around the nipple here on the top. It'll just help that vacuum hose go on just a little bit easier. All right, so now we have replaced the uh, fuel regulator on this Ford. So as long as the dash is apart, might as well replace the fuel selector switch. Uh, they're cheap, 20 bucks, $25, uh, and it's a real pain to take the dash apart. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that switch while we're at it. And now that uh, we're at that stage, it's time to actually see if the truck will start. So, now we're ready to start it up and make sure that the switch is working properly and uh, that the engine actually runs. So I'm going to go give it a shot, see if we've got the engine running. So clearly the engine runs. I'm now gonna go switch to the rear tank and make sure that fuel pump is running properly and that the engine continues to run. So I'm gonna go flip the switch and we'll see if the engine continues to run. <laughs> so I've now switched to the rear tank. The engine's still running, uh, it's sounding good. You notice it's coming down in RPMs a little bit. That's just because it's warming up. So we've now fixed the problem. We've replaced the fuel regulator, and we've shown you the uh, we've shown you that it runs off of both of them. So the last thing we want to do is we want to do an actual fuel pressure check, and then we'll be able to say that we've actually got it fixed. Well, we appreciate you watching this video. We hope we've been instructive. The main takeaway from this video is that don't immediately jump to your fuel pumps if you think you have a fuel problem. It's always better off to go ahead and do some diagnostics, to bypass a few things, to make sure that everything, is, everything else is okay before you start dropping your fuel tanks and replacing the fuel pumps. Uh, hopefully this has been instructive for you as to how to make sure that you've properly diagnosed a fuel problem and without having to start piecemealing it where you replace the fuel pumps and it's still not working and then you replace this, replace that, that. This is a good way to do a diagnostic. We appreciate you watching this. Click the subscribe button and the like button down below, and please use our links uh, for purchasing any items that you need that are associated with fixing your fuel problem. Thank you very much.